In this video, we're discussing what software engineers do and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if you wanna be a successful engineer, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. There's lots of good stuff in the description below, the Discord server, the free 1% Engineer Kit, the link to our new IG page. So make sure you check out the description of this video, guys. Software engineering gets searched more than any other type of engineering field because there's such a large demand for anything programming, data analytics, all of those being under the umbrella of computer science. So let's get right into the video, guys. Software engineering is the systematic application of scientific and technological knowledge, methods, and experience applied to the design, implementation, testing, and documentation of software. In short, software engineering is the application and development of software. Software engineering is a branch of computer science. In fact, guys, software engineering is just a tiny branch of, of the CS industry. Computer science is more of a study of the processes of how we use and interact with our data in the form of programs. CS professionals use and develop algorithms to manage, save, transfer, communicate, and understand data or any sort of digitally coded information. Because of this, computer scientists study more of the theory of computation and the design of software systems rather than the creation of the actual software or application itself. Who wants to be a software engineer? Let me know why this is the engineering type for you. Leave a comment below. Now that we've briefly covered the differences between overarching CS and software engineering, let's get into a little history. In the 1950s, computer programming languages were starting to emerge, which was massive progress. Fortran, for example, an ancient language that I recognize is one of these early languages. In the beginning, the term software engineering started to be used in the 1960s. There was a conference that NATO held in 1968, and in 2018, the conference celebrated 50 years of software engineering. So this field is only 50 years old at best. And here we are in an era where there are tons of coding boot camps and people can become software engineers with essentially no institutionalized training. You can teach yourself everything. In fact, some of the best coders have. So it's really interesting as to where the industry will go. A lot of people speculate that coding is the next coal mining. There's such a boom for people in that industry that there will be no jobs available one day. We will see. And a lot of people talk about the fact that AI and machine learning is actually gonna write software much much better than humans ever will. But for now, this industry is ripping, it's in high demand, and it's a pretty safe avenue to approach if you are interested in anything coding, programming, and actually want to be an engineer within this field and build stuff, make stuff, create stuff. With that being said, guys, now let's talk about the subfields of software engineering. All primary engineering lanes have several branches or subfields within them. Software engineering has four. Field number one, applications development and product engineering. This is problem-based, non-web-based software development that includes programming language such is Java and C+. In order to understand this specific subfield a little better, I want to point out a software engineering YouTuber that I love, Mayuko, where she was in this video with the top 10 engineering YouTube channels that I made two years ago, who works on mobile apps, is a product engineer and product manager, who is ahead of the product process. She talks about her work as she gets to hand things over to the designer who works out the look, and then how she's the software engineer who actually builds the projects that she works on. She says the role is very collaborative, they get to make decisions as a team, and the entire process can happen super fast. Sometimes a new product comes out in just a few weeks. So it's very exciting, it's very dynamic, it's very agile, very flexible, very innovative. This is what software engineers do. She says that about 20% of her time is spent working within the team and collaborating and coordinating with the project manager. About 70% of her time is actually spent building the product. She works out a plan based on discussions with the team, asks questions like, do I need to coordinate with other teams in the company? How am I going to format the data and express it in a way that I want and so on. The final 10% of her time, she says, is spent doing random things around the company. Subfield number two is systems development. Systems development engineers design and code the background software created to support application development, which includes programming languages like C and C++. There's another video by a software engineer named Forrest Knight that I really like, whose channel is all about his experience in this type of role, so go ahead and check it out. Especially in his What I Do as a Software Engineer video, where he expresses even more flexibility on the job than Mayuko does, even though she has a great situation too. The company he's with is more like an actual startup, where it seems much smaller, and he talks about setting up alerts for content as he manages some of the social media, and does a series of other things for such a small company. This is a very common thing, guys. Think about massive brands we know of today like Instagram which in only 500 days of production and 11 people sold the company 
for $1 billion. There were people doing all types of different tasks. So if you find yourself a part of a startup team, just like I have at Nerdit now, then you might be doing a variety of things. The third subfield is web development. These engineers design software applications to run in a web browser and use programming language like HTML, JavaScript, and PHP. I really like this video of a day in the life of a web developer, a YouTuber that I follow named Chris. He used to work in code for Entrepreneur Magazine. So check out his channel for sure where he explores a little bit of what it's like to be a web development engineer. The third subfield is an embedded systems development engineer. Embedded software engineering is the process of control controlling various devices and machines that are different from traditional computers, all using software engineering. Integrated software engineering with non-computer devices leads to the formation of embedded systems. Embedded systems are typically popular in medical science, consumer electronics, manufacturing science, aviation, and automotive technology. Okay, now that you understand the four subfields within software engineering, let's talk about the different type of software engineering roles that you could find yourself in. Role number one is a front-end software engineer. Front-end engineers develop user interfaces for software applications, web applications, or any sort of products. If you ever hear of a UX slash UI engineer or user experience user interface engineer, this is exactly what they're talking about, a front-end engineer. Front-end engineers handle cross-browser capabilities and troubleshoot and bug fix their code in order to have things look how they intended. Role type number two is a back-end engineer and these clearly work hand-in-hand -hand with front-end engineers because oftentimes it is the back-end that dictates what you see on the front-end. These engineers focus on the underlying core logic of the software environment in order to prioritize application performance while focusing on scalability. This is really big, scalability guys. As the company grows, as the user grows, does the back-end code and logic make sense? They do this by integrating with data systems, caches, email systems, and they use application programming interfaces or APIs. Role number three is a full stack engineer. A software engineer who can handle both front end and back end work is called a full stack engineer. This is very important in some ecosystems, especially if you're a part of a small team or there's some portion of your workflow and way that your company is run such that you really need to understand the front end and the back end. They have skills required to create a fully functional web application from soup to nuts. Role number four is a software Software engineer in test or a quality assurance engineer. This type of software engineer is responsible for writing software to validate the quality of the application and is called a QA engineer. Quality assurance engineers create automated tests, tools, and methods to make sure that the products and processes run as expected. Role number five is a DevOps engineer. Software engineers who are familiar with the technologies required for the development of systems to build, deploy, integrate, and administer backend software and distributed systems are called DevOps engineers. They mostly manage the application infrastructure or i.e. the database systems, servers, etc. Role type number six is a security engineer, a software engineer who specializes in creating systems, methods, and procedures to test the security of a software system and exploit and fix security flaws is called a security engineer. This type of developer often works as a white hat, ethical hacker, and attempts to penetrate systems to discover vulnerabilities. This is a big deal nowadays, guys. As you know, cybersecurity and data security are all such a big deal. Many other types of software engineer roles exist in different engineering functions. Ultimately, they all work towards providing a seamless user experience of their application. So now that you know the four subfields and you know six core types of roles within software engineering, let's talk a little bit about the work environment. Just like many engineering fields, software engineers can work pretty much anywhere. There's a huge demand for them in the actual web development and the application space. All of these platforms have their own team. All of these companies that have their own web portals or applications have their own software developers who are constantly working on improvements and new versions and maybe even fully new products within their software suite. You also have a lot of software engineers who get hired for big business like the financial industry and the energy sector and insurance sectors, along with all massive Fortune 500 companies who code their own customer relationship management systems, their own file sharing systems. They need a team to develop all of their own internal web applications so they don't have to use things like Google Drive, Dropbox. They don't have to use a web client. Everything is safe and secure and they need software engineers to build all of these things for them. As we saw from Forest Knight's channel, software engineers can also find themselves working for a very small team. You can have someone who creates their own company with just one person or maybe even a co-founder situation and a small team like the Instagram story. It's also very common for software engineers to be hired remotely and never even meet the people that they're working with or consulting with or doing a project for. Especially nowadays in the era of COVID-19, guys, this is one type of industry where you can literally work from anywhere and all you need is a laptop and a secure and decently fast internet connection. 
You can also become a freelancer as a software engineer and take on projects and consult with companies that are just looking to do a standalone gig here or there. And you can basically take as much work as you need. You can hustle, you can bill out really high hours and do better for yourself on an hour by hour basis than you would working for a corporation. But then you run your own show, so it's a little more risky. And finally, there's almost always an avenue for entrepreneurship for software engineers. I think this is one of the most exciting and illustrious things around coding and programming and the development of applications and software is that maybe you could build something that changes the world and literally change your own community, your own personal situation, family, and financial future for ever. Not all engineers can do this, but software engineers definitely can. With the work environment being covered, guys, and the potential different ways that you can find employment or work, let's talk about the PE exam really quickly. The professional engineering exam for software engineers was introduced in 2013, and it was already decommissioned last year after only six years of being on the market. I read somewhere that only 82 engineers all across the country even took it. Basically, there was no demand and really no outlet for the value of a professional engineering license within the software engineering industry the reason for this is that the PE stamp of approval goes on a design you don't really design things within software and also the stamp and the PE is to make those engineers accountable and responsible for their work if someone is harmed or if resources are lost those are two things that are seen in a very different way within software engineering yes resources can be lost in the way of time and people can be hurt if say an autonomous train that is controlled by software goes off the tracks or something like this but there's incredibly less impact for human life or physical infrastructure lost. So in the industry, there's never really been a demand for software engineering. By the time there's a bug, they fix it as soon as possible and keep right on moving forward. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. What do software engineers do? If you have a question or want to request an upcoming video, guys, comment below. Check out the links in the description for access to the 1% Engineer Kit, the Discord channel, and more. Thanks again for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys. Here, we empower young engineers by helping them rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the bell and and subscribe thanks again if you guys enjoyed this video please smash that like button because it helps so much let's see if we can get to 500 likes guys thanks again check out some more content here guys and i'll see you again in another video bye bye